Hello everyone, uh, this is a submission video for AJDQ 2022. Uh, the game is going to be Ori and the Blind Forest Definitive Edition, and the category is going to be All Cells, No Out of Bounds Teleport Anywhere. Out of Bounds stands for your usual, and Teleport Anywhere is a glitch that, as you can guess from the name, has completely broken the game's open. We can't quite teleport anywhere we want, but we can teleport from anywhere we want, which has a lot of really bad consequences. <laughs> so anyway, I think we can just get going. Um, there's not a, a lot going on at the start of the run, so it's safe to assume I can just go. So Orient the Blind Forest is a metroidvania, which means it's designed in a way where uh, we have almost nothing at the start, We're, you're gonna see it right here, uh, we walk around with just um, just walking and jumping, but as we get more and more ability we get access to more and more areas of the game. Oops. Got the good luck water dip here. So the first thing you're gonna notice is that we do most of the run with the UI off. The reason for that is it skips all the dialogue that's in the game, including uh, the cutscene from um, getting cells, which, as you can imagine, is really useful in all cells. So right here we're picking up Sign, our first ability, our companion for the run. Uh, normally Sign is supposed to tell us about a lot of lore right here through a lot of dialogue, but because we have the UI toggled off, we can just skip that. And what Sign allows us to do is shoot at enemies when they aggro us. Oh, it's an auto target. And we are allowed to use Crawley in this game so that we don't have to mash, because we would have to mash at 30 hertz, and it would be really annoying for pacing. And now that we have our ability, we can progress through Sunken Glades, which is notoriously one of the <laughs> most annoying areas in the game. It's still a lot of micro optimizations, a lot of things that can go wrong, like this. Right here, that's the first. It's a lot of managing your jumps. And slime aggros and all that. Have to pick up this energy. So first glitch coming up, um, after we damage boost through the slime up top, we're gonna do something called the ghost door. So it turns out that if you load the save while keystones are into a door, uh, the door kind of disappears, so we're gonna do that by uh, taking a death right here into the water. This is called the ghost door, it saves about 3 seconds per door. Uh, we can do it on most doors, which is why it's gonna, it's gonna come back later in the run. Taking a little detour to grab this keystone. And as we get down Sunken Glades, we are about to get our first uh, ability, Wall Jump. Pretty self-explanatory, allows us to jump off walls. Uh, there is no stamina, so we can jump off walls infinitely as long as the wall geometry allows us to. And you may have seen that I have a very specific experience count right here. Uh, this is simply due to the fact that experience routing in this game is extremely important. Uh, we do a lot of time level ups that allows us to refill our resources and also get a shockwave that damages everything around us right here. Here, this clears all the spores in the way, it saves about 5-ish um, seconds. 
But it's not nearly as important as the next time level up that's coming up. But for now, we're just gonna go back up. Um, you may have noticed that we skipped... We're not going the intended progression right now. Because um, the game intends for us to go left and meet the spirit tree. But what we're gonna do instead is go to the definitive edition um, exclusive area of the game, Blackwood Burrows. Because in this area, there's a very powerful skill called Dash. And to do that, we're gonna have to go through a cutscene that we're gonna skip thanks to a glitch called the Same Anywhere. Basically, if you uh, trick the game into thinking that you have closed the menu while you have not, you can spend a skill point anywhere which saves the game. So I just entered the cutscene and saved instantly. That's the go-to use for Save Anywhere, is entering cutscenes and then saving inside of them. And now we're in Blackwood Burrows. Should be noted that this area is completely optional. Uh, you can complete the game without doing it at all. Which is why you can access it as early as now. Uh, even casually, you're... The area was intended to be clearable with only wall jump. And the idea is that we have to carry this orb around, uh, which slows us down a lot, but uh, allows us to do some pretty interesting stuff with physics. Most notably, the fast cycle that's coming up. If I can get it, because it's. Um, I'm not. Yeah, I'm not gonna get it. I'm not going for it. That was too late. But yeah, we can get a fast cycle here on those platforms. Uh, it's a very cycle based area, unfortunately with cycles that are loaded basically the entire time. So not quite global, but we're getting in that territory. Still close monitoring of the XP count. You can see I'm uh, choosing which XP I pick and which I do not. This is intentional. Uh, the next time level up is coming up soon, but first we're going to clear this area and we're gonna do another save anywhere. Uh, this next one's gonna be a bit different because uh, we're not gonna skip the entirety of a cutscene, we're just going to um, skip the first half and that's going to allow us to stack two cutscenes together and give us movement while we're not supposed to. So what we're supposed to do here is put the orb into this altar uh, down here, but... Um, by saving in this specific spot, triggering save anywhere. Right here, I just skipped the first half of this cutscene, and now I'm going to skip the second half. And the result is self explanatory, we're just gonna move out of here blind. That was really scary, because if you fall down there, um, the game auto-saves because of the way uh, saving outside um, kill trees works, so you're stuck down there forever, basically. And the next glitch is coming up, so if you remember all, uh, all that stuff I was going on about um, with EXP counts, uh, this is going to come into play now. Up ahead is a 4 energy door. And we have two energy, so what we're gonna do is put two energy into the door, level up, and put another two. And we're gonna you do this by leveling up off of this, off of this front key. Like this. And now we're out of energy, which means we cannot save if we were to... Okay, never mind. We're good. Okay. That was very scary. This area is called Death Gauntlet for a reason. <laughs> And we still cannot save the energy that we just got from this energy cell because there is a door that we have to open up ahead. The sword. We're gonna come back later, but for now, uh, a very, very tight cycle. I cannot guarantee I will get it. Didn't get it. You have to dash at a very specific position to uh, barely squeeze in through those crushers. It's really tight, saves at 8 seconds.
more health manipulation for his ghost sword coming up. So we're also going to skip this uh, skill tree cutscene. But this time we're just gonna open the ability menu and spend the skill points. Uh, it's that simple. And move out of here blind. Oh no, I died in here again. Okay, we're good. So as I mentioned, the autosave system is pretty weird. Because um, if you skip a spirit tree cutscene, the game's still going to autosave at the end of that cutscene regardless. So if you save at a at the wrong spot, you are in for a very bad time. Uh, more coming up here, Grotto skip, uh, wall jump of a tiny piece of wall right here, uh, skip the entire left half of Grotto. Also important, baguette jump, uh, shout out to all the French runners. And more cutscene skipping, uh, this time we're gonna save inside the cutscene by rekindling a save from an ability that we just picked up, which allows us to use our save twice. And now, uh, Gumu is kind of frozen in place right here. Uh, this is gonna be a staple for <laughs> most of the runs, so better get used to it. And now we have what well, we need to get our next ability. So we just got the Water Vein. Uh, the Water Vein allows us to get into the Ginzo Tree. And this is where our next ability is, so we're gonna have to get that. Taking a small detour to pick up an energy cell, uh, health cell, sorry. Those health cells kind of look like cabbage though. <laughs> I keep saying that. So this bit right here, Enter Ginzo, is one of the most technical that's in the run. It's really hard, a lot of really tight movements, tight wraparounds, wall jumping. It's probably one of the hardest places in the run. Most notably, a really tight cycle is coming up right here. I didn't get it. Oh, we can dash before this crusher hits the ground. More rekindle skipping? Checking my health count here. Uh, so most of the time you're gonna see me um, turn UI on and then back off. This is just because there's a cutscene up ahead with dialogue. And here we're in the Ginza tree. Uh, another very technical area in this game. Uh, lots of really tight movements. And this cycle right here that says 1.5 seconds is really tight. Gonna beat this. Uh, Small enemy called Gamer. Oops. This puzzle you can do with just one of the two blocks that you're supposed to use. So if you're really good at facing your shots, you can beat this guy in 3 cycles, but it's really hard. Most people just do it in 4 and call it a day. Because even with scroll wheel, we have to scroll at very specific paces, which is much, much harder than it looks. Another door, another ghost door. You know the drill by now. And now we have Bash. Uh, pretty much the iconic ability from this game. Uh, we can kind of bounce off a projectile. 
it, so... Another uh, glitch coming up called Piju Ping. So I just took a death with three keystones into this door, and now I have them again. Because my save is far enough, the game thinks I left the door area, so it placed the keystones both back in my inventory and inside the world. So now I can just pick them up again. Like so. This skips a huge part of Ginzo Tree because what you're gonna see right here is uh, the last of Ginzo. We will not be coming back here for the entirety of the run, and we are never going to complete Ginzo Tree either. The reason for that is that uh, the Kijipin glitch we just did allows us to skip all the swimming part that we have to do in Thornfell Swamp, so we don't need the keystones for that. And that's. The second glitch that allows us to get into Swamp without going through Ginzo Tree is uh, the one that's coming up, it's called Swamp Entry. We're gonna use our friend the frog, affectionately named Dringo. Um, you will understand why later. Another Frozen Gumo. So we're gonna um, use one of Ringo's shots to break this floor for us and break the second floor. There we go. So sometimes you might notice... Uh, oh, also another glitch coming up. Um, saving during a dash and reloading the save allows us to keep the dash lead. So sometimes you might notice that I bash off the same target twice. This is completely normal. It's called double bashing, and the reason it works is that uh, you have a one frame time period during which you can bash a target again, and you can go in the same direction. It's really powerful. Oops. So yeah, bashing, uh, double bashing is really powerful. Um, we're gonna use it right here, uh, so you can see just how powerful an ability it is. Get healed up, get this fish, and double bash it all the way up to grab this energy cell. So yeah, it's a very powerful tool for movements. And now here's why our friend is named Ringo. Good drum performance, Ringo, thank you. <laughs> so all skills normally would go to the left and go get Charfin directly, but there's a few cells that we have to get right here, and we're nearby, so might as well. More double bashing. So it should be noted that even though double bashes are technically frame perfect, we can use scroll wheel. Sometimes they can get a bit finicky though, because they tend to... Um... So this game has a bit of an issue with lag. And so if you scroll and the game lags during one of your scrolling frames, uh, it messes up everything. It's really annoying. to grab the cell. Another difference, all skills would normally get the cell to the left, we're not gonna do that right now. Just skip this and rekindle skip another cutscene. 
Something interesting is that you can stun those blue walls from the right side only. I'm not sure why. It's probably just collisions being weird. And then we have Char Flame. It's not going to be very useful. Uh, it will be once in a while, but we only really get it because it lo it's the... It's the gateway to getting some dash upgrades, uh, most notably the air dash upgrade that we just got, and the upcoming upgrade uh, that we're gonna get once we get this ability sale right here. Charge dash. So charge dash is very powerful, um, allows us to kind of zoom at enemies in this way. Oops. Can damage them, but you can bash the enemies and cancel it. So it should be noted that Charge Dash costs 1 energy, but um, cancelling a Charge Dash refunds that energy. So say if I were to Charge Dash this Lantern and bash it, the energy gets refunded. And we don't have time to breathe much, because another trick is coming up right here. Oh, also here's a Rocket Jump. You're welcome. Oh my god, please! <laughs> uh, I'll explain those later. For now, um, just remember that it's the use of charge dash. For now, we have a trick. Um, bash the spider shot at a very precise angle, run away to unload some rocks that are in the way, and very, very quickly get this ability sale right as the spider shot hits some rocks that warp us inside this cutscene. It is extremely precise. The angle is about 2 to 3 degrees, I believe. So now we have Charge Dash. Uh, remember what I said about Rocket Jumps? If you cancel a Charge Dash with upwards momentum, or downwards, um, you get some really interesting movement, like this. Oh, and by the way, here's Sorrow Bash. Sequence break into Sorrow Pass. Very hard. Should be noted that Charge Dash angle changes... Um, uh, sorry, Rocket Jump speed changes with the angle. Like, that was a Rocket Jump that I just did right here. So all skills would go directly through the main path of Sorrow, but we have a cell that we need to get on the way, so might as well just get it right now. Get this really tight cycle with the lasers, I'm glad I safety saved. This cycle is not easy. There we go. So something really interesting about how those cells work is that um, by waiting out in the air long enough you can kind of make the game forget that it has to play a cutscene, saves 44 frames each time. And here's a trick called the Crazy Juggle. Each of those inputs that you're seeing, each of those charge dashes is a 3 frame window to cancel the charge dash before the dash hits the frog. It is really precise. Allows us to get all the way to the top and get Sudstone. There is another route that we can do involving another trick, but Crazy Juggle is the same speed as this one, and it's much more impressive to do. So now we have Sunstone. Uh, just I just skipped a one minute or so cutscene. And now we're gonna get Charge Jump. Really good ability. Allows us to, well, charge up and jump like so. 
And we're going to take a little detour. Uh, once again, that all skills doesn't do to grab an ability cell. And head down to Misty Moons. This area is very scary, because the spikes here deal a lot of damage. This is an endgame area, and we don't have that much health. Second detour to grab a life cell. That was a meteor kick, by the way. Uh, think of it as a reverse rocket jump, it's the same idea, but put downwards momentum instead. So Misty Woods is one of the favorite areas on most runners, because um, as you can see, um, we have a lot of tools that we can use to move around really fast. So all of this is a combination of charge dashes, charge jumps, and uh, and cancelling those. You can see I'm keeping my user interface on for this because because charge dash costs energy, if you mess up a charge dash cancel, you have to adapt to it. So I have to monitor my energy and health. So it just got climbed, uh, it's not very useful by itself, but um, the randomizer fans in the chat will type 2 out of 3. Because climb on its own is not very useful, but when you combine it with other abilities it becomes really powerful. But we'll get there later, uh, for now it's just a little of retype platforming. Up ahead is a mini boss that we can quick kill uh, pretty easily. Uh, just, gonna s just going to safety save and pick up this energy. Out of my way, please. Thank you. Because what we're going to do right now is take this orb and place it into the pedestal that's all the way in the entrance of Misty Woods. It's by far one of the most annoying sections in the game because we have to navigate through all of it without spending any energy because we need it for right after it. And those slimes really like to get in the way. Actually, I'll, I'll just kill this guy out of safety, you never know. Okay, so another two-part cutscene right here. Uh, first part is now skipped through a rekindle. And second half is now skipped, and you know the drill. We are moving out of Misty Woods completely blind. And there we go. We are now on the Valley of the Wind teleporter. Uh, the camera is messed up. That's completely normal. We're around here. And now we're starting the huge revisit segment of the game. Oops. I just went out of bounds. <laughs> That's fine. I didn't benefit from it, so the run is still valid. So Blackfruit Burrows is going to be one of the first areas that we revisit. 
after we do a small glitch to get this door to open for us. Take a small detour to get cell. Because Blackroot Burrows is actually separated into two parts. We completed the first part uh, early in the game, but now we have to do the second part. Another save anywhere right here. Uh, this one is really powerful. It skips about a two minute cutscene. And now we have grenades, so... My grenade allows us to throw a grenade around, but remember when I said climb on its own was not very powerful? Well. Here's what happens if you combine a climb, fire jump, and a grenade. So that's a grenade jump. Um, basically, the game forgets to decelerate or if you throw a grenade on the frame before you charge jump off the wall. It's really powerful, of course. But grenade was not the reason why we came into Blackwood Burrows, uh, although it's really useful. But we mostly came here because of all the cells that are in there. Those spikes are an instant kill, so the movement right here can be pretty spooky. So you've been noticing um, that I have been leveling up abilities from the green tree, or blue tree as people like to call it. I personally think it's blue, but to each their own. Uh, this is for a poison swim that's coming up, because remember, we never completed Ginza tree, so every water is still poison right now. Keep that in mind, because up ahead is one of the most annoying areas in the game. Just keep a watch on my health counts. Lost Grove Swim is one of the most tight swims in the game. It's really easy to mess up. I'm glad I got through here first try, honestly. Oops. And we're out of Lost Grove. Another grenade jump here to skip a cutscene trigger. This cutscene is about three minutes long, I'd say. Uh oh, I just. Well, I guess we're watching the cutscene then. Here's why you skip it. I'm not sure what happened there. I think I bonked on the ceiling. That's absolutely a first. Oh well. Enjoy uh, Naru's dad. Gonna be a good opportunity for me to drink a bit. All the talking is getting sore on my throat. But yeah, normally what we're supposed to do is grenade jump over the cutscene trigger. Also, obviously, spoilers.
The game being in German does not have any influence, by the way. It's just... It's preference. So finally, we're out of this cutscene. Uh, there is a time level up coming up just to refill resources. I didn't quite get it. I'm not sure why, but that's fine. Uh, there's a backup for it. Slime right here. And now we're starting the huge cleanup sections uh, of the runs. So it's mostly just going to be revisiting areas uh, that we've, we'd already seen before. Except we're gonna take a detour to Fallen Runes. Uh, because that area is so out of the way that you only want to go there once. Another long swim though, in Poison Water. So the ability that we leveled up earlier in the Green Tree is Ultra Defense, which halves the damage that we take from water, among other things. But we still don't quite have enough health to get through the swim, so we're going to save a bunch using another ability from the blue tree, because with this ability, saving refills our health. So we just use it to recover basically full health. And this allows us to make it through the swim. throw can be really finicky. There we go. Resources, but we should be fine. So Forlorn Ruins is an extremely dangerous area, mostly because we're all out of health due to Valley Long Swim. So it's pretty easy to die in. Fortunately, the game auto saves upon entering the area, but still. It's a pretty punishing area to die in. Those fights from right here are instant kill, by the way. So I just triggered the cutscene through a door thanks to Charge Dash Hitbox, and another save anywhere coming up. Uh, as you notice, I'm leveling up a bunch of abilities, but this is solely because um, we have a lot of ability points, so we might as well get those marginal time save, like energy efficiency, which um, gives us more energy from crystals, and uh, charge flame burn, which um, allows us to pick up some energy that we're not quite supposed to pick up. That's gonna come into play later in the run. For now, um, another cutscene skip and really, really tight cycles. Once again, trigger the cutscene through the door. There we go. The first cycle. Waiting this one out. We can't quite beat this later, so we're gonna do a grenade jump instead. And we're out of Forlorn Ruins. Next step is Moon Grotto. So now is where the serious cleanup starts because we have all the movement options. 
sorry about that. I had some IRL moments. So, as I was saying, um, Forlorn Ruins is the last area that we're gonna truly visit. But now we start to have a lot of resources. We have a lot of health, a lot of energy, and a lot of energy means a lot of charge dashes. Barely getting the cycle. So another property of save anywhere is that if you if you save and you're in the air, the game is gonna place Ori down on the ground that's below. So you can kind of save up through lasers. Allows us to skip this puzzle. And barely catch this pressure cycle. Another really cool grenade jump coming up. This one puts us back all the way up in Grotto. And that's it from Grotto, pretty much. If we die right here, we uh, end up really far. Especially this next cell that we're gonna get. Um, the laser is an instant kill. Just fine with this. And upcoming right now is mostly just really tight movements. So this area is what really separate the good runners from the great in my opinion because all the movement is just so tight. Even though you have a lot of energy, it's a really tightly choreographed area. Really hard to get through without messing up everything because if you fail once, um, you can very quickly end up out of energy and not knowing what to do. Most notably, this next area called Horror Fields. So 
So this area below us, the ground right here, is an instant kill as well. So gotta be really careful. So as you can see, movement mistakes are really common. Even though we can make it somewhat consistent, it's still a really high-paced section. Which is why I think this makes for an entertaining race. Because everything is just so fast that it's really easy to make mistakes. Small trick coming up called game storage. Uh, basically, we can trick the game into thinking that we haven't left while we in fact have. And we will be inside this cutscene while it plays, which allows us to effectively skip it. Final save anywhere. Uh, this save anywhere is going to change our position inside the map and we're going to use it uh, together with a trick called door warp. If you enter a door on the frame that you load a save, you will get warped to a default position which happens to be the, the end of Mount Horu. You can see if I get it, it's really really tight. Usually it takes 4 or 5 tries. Because it is a frame per factory. Nice, third try. So the save anywhere that we just did just places us back in front of the main door. And now another occurrence of game storage to skip the warmth return cutscene. Getting the first half of the escape blind. Some really cool range jumps. And the next running jump is not going to be quite time. Uh, there's still some movement afterwards, but it's one of the major cutting skips. Uh, saves about 40 seconds. It's the main reason why we pick grenade in the first place. Because it's just so powerful. Well, that and the fact that some cells are hard locked behind grenade, but. That's a detail. <laughs> Grenade just saves too much time. And the final bit of gameplay will involve me hopping around with Naru, and time will be coming up really shortly. And time. more uh, IRL stuff, distraction going on. Uh, so yeah, that was all cells. Uh, no out of bounds teleport anywhere. Uh, I hope that you have enjoyed this submission video. Uh, I think it makes a really cool category for a race because of all the fast-paced movement that's going on. And Ronnie is a really competent runner, so yeah. I hope I will be taken in. <laughs> So if we do happen to get taken in as well, uh, we will have two external commentators. We will be deafened ourselves during the run to allow ourselves to focus better. So yeah, uh, thank you for watching and please consider our games on quick. Bye!